today this is nation's voice tower your most preferred youtube channel now um i've been doing lots of digging lately and um this particular one this particular um file that has come up um is the most important file that you could lay your hands on within the last let me say within the last five years of the history of nigeria my name is angelo your uncle before i go further now um this file uh, is coming somewhere from a direct source but you can still confirm um, the legitimacy and the authenticity of this particular um, a secret uh, uh, file that I'm bringing to you so that you will know what I'm saying all right now there used to be one man called um, late Yinka Oduma King now Yinka Oduma King um, is actually a former um, public secretary, that is publicity secretary of the Afeni Ferry. Now, um, he used to be um, a former friend of Bola Ahmed Tinubu. So he has come out to expose Bola Ahmed Tinubu from beginning to the end. Everything about his lifestyle, growing up, to be very, very specific, growing up. But unfortunately, uh, Yinka Odumakin died in 2021 um, on the 3rd of April from COVID-19 um, complications. So let me read a letter. He called this, he wrote a letter directly to Tinubu. This letter can be found when you go deep into research in Nigerian political history. You can find this letter, although it is not yet out and is not yet popular as usual. Now listen. The letter is so long, so I will read only the most important parts that expose lots of secrets about Bola Tinubu. This man, Yinka Odumakin, knows Bola Tinubu right from the roots. So you can tell, or you can tell that um, this uh, uh, information coming from here is very legitimate. Now, from almost the fourth or fifth paragraph of the letter, that is places that are of utmost concern to us. Now listen, he said, since you guys made a failed attempt to impugn my integrity, I have chosen to use this edition to place your life side by side, mine, on the scale of integrity, so we can know if your hand can point at the boil in a hawk's eye. I intend to show that where it's not that Nigeria has become Caesar's palace, where the leper holds the veil. Nobody in your circle should move near that subject. Next paragraph. Pay attention. I am Yinka Odumakin and nobody can say he had known me under any identity in my life. He is directing this to Bola Tinubu. I have led a straight life unlike you that people know under different identities depending on where they met you in your about 80 years on earth can you hear me yes 80 those of us who are knowledgeable about you can't buy your 66 years claim for so many reasons he is claiming 66 years remember volatinibu was claiming 66 years uh, at the time of this later the current governor of oshun is the son listen very carefully the current governor of oshun is the son of your immediate senior sister from iragbeji and he is 63 while you are claiming 66. your first wife died in lagos recently unannounced at 74 years how can then bola Tinubu be 66 years as at filing this report sometime in 2021 or thereabouts when the son he had for you died many, that is, he's referring to the wife of Bolatin, his first wife, Bolatin Bull's first wife, that died recently in Lagos at the age of 74, as at the time of writing this letter, not this year. When the son she had for you died many months earlier, his age had to be doctored to fit into the lie that you live. And there is a photograph of yours at the palace of the Shoun Obomosho in 1974. Listen to this. When the current monarch was installed with a bottle of beer 
and the packet of cigarette in your presence, in your front. You mean you were 20 years when you were drinking and smoking in a palace? That is what he's trying to ask Tinubu here. If he is claiming he was 66 years in 2021 or 2020 or thereabouts, that means in 1974, during when uh, in the palace of the Shogun of Bomosho, when the current monarch was being installed with a pack of cigarettes and beer, Bola Tinubu was there. Who would call a 20-year-old boy to come to a coronation in Yoruba land? What will a 20-year-old boy that has no roots to royalty be called to do in presence of elder statesmen that are doing a coronation? That means he was not 20 years. Listen, there is no school I have attended in my life that my classmates would not come out in droves to say, yeah, we were there together. From St. Augustine Primary School, Ondo, to CAC Grammar School, um, to CAC Grammar School, and then down to, uh, to, to CAC Grammar School, Edunabong, and Odudua College, Leife, down to Obafemi Awolowo University, Leife, and University of Ghana. At your end, St. John Primary School, Aroloya, you claimed may be created by your new governor in Lagos. The old boys of Government College, Ibado, were planning a reception for you when someone asked which set you belong to, there has been no answer to that till date. And the reception was cancelled. They never received him as an old student. The tales by moonlight on Chicago State University and University of Chicago are all over the place. This particular letter was written in 2020. 2020, 2021. That was when this letter was written. Can you now see, even before the campaign period? So pay attention, lots of secrets were let bear here by late Yinka Odumakin. Now, I'm reading. My parents are alive in Oshun, and by God's grace, I will give them a befitting burial. I will not have to send emissaries to bury them, since I have not abandoned mommy to be calling another woman, Mami, in Lagos, to fit a life of lie and greed. He is directing this straight to Tinubu. Listen to this, lots of secrets. No Mama Awolo would have told me that she knew all the children of Mami and that I was not, you know, that I was not one of them. He is trying to compare himself to Tinubu. That means People never knew his real parents. They died long ago. My parents are not rich, but I am proud of them because it is from their black pot that my white pulp has come out. I say proudly among my university mates today that they could not afford more than 60 naira per month for me throughout my university days. The story of grass to grace is a proud thing among the Yoruba. MKO Abiola was proud of the story that he ate eggs for the first time in his life in the home of Symbiat, Abiola's parents. Listen, more secrets. With the modest means of my parents, they instilled so much values in me that there is no crime attached to my name in all my years on earth. Forging traveling passports, had never appealed to me. Neither has my name been linked to a narcotic ring leading to inquiry and for future of assets. All my life, my hands have provided me, have provided for me, and they have provided for you too. He is still speaking. This letter was written because the um, friends of Tinubu or his allies and supporters peeled out or picked out Yinka Odumakin for criticism because he had left Tinubu's union. Now listen, I recall when you turned from exile in 1998 and running for governor, you were not a Zego. Listen, that means he had no money. Then, you were not a Zego then. You had only the Sunday Adigun house and all the four cars you used then belonged to Mr. Ganiu Solomon. 
there were a lot of printings being done for you by your friends at the news. I saw the price you were being offered and I told you my press could do it at 40%. I delivered and saved you 60%. I recall Mr. Babafemi Ojodu complained openly that they could not do the price I offered you. That that should tell you and your attack dogs that I have always separated the course I believe in from what I would eat, unlike you who always mixes the two. You pose as a June 12th hero today, but Kola Abiola is alive to tell the story of what happened to MKO's money as Boshurun is no longer alive. Remember the expose I brought about Tinubu that linked MKO Abiola to some shady deals of um, some fraudulently acquired money in the US? Now, Polatinibu has been linked to that money. That means he inherited lots of Abiola's money after Abiola's death. No wonder he has been upholding Abiola as a Democrat. Now listen, in 20 years, there is hardly any boundary between Lagos, <coughs> between Lagos Treasury and your private pockets. Your zero to G moment is coming to some day and all the dirty deals will be out. Listen, like a rapist, you can tell your victims to shout for as long as stolen funds and drug money rule Lagos politics. I have noticed that because you and your followers have no abiding principle and you are driven by only lust for money, you assume it is for everybody. You are being glued to the lowest of all spirits, money makes it difficult for you to make the right judgment about people thinking they are all about money. Listen, was it that you didn't have money when I told you in December 2006 that it was over between us politically? Have I ever looked in your direction ever? There are men who may not be able to give 10,000 naira to a cause but if they say they want to see me at 8 a.m., I will be there at 7. Can you summon me with all your bullion vans? I recall how you said to me in 2006 about Senator Tokumbo Afikuyomi, and I quote you, he said in Yoruba, Adie ni Tokumbo nyagbado fun apada. I'm not in Yoruba, but I, I'm trying to speak. Now, the pronunciation is, or the, tra the translation, I beg your pardon, is Tokumbo is a foul. Throw cons and throw cons and it's a U-turn. That's what that statement means in Yoruba. Has he not turned his back at you today? You don't have cons again. This was the man who was your fall guy when you made all the forgeries in 1999. He was among the theme that went to bury your biological mother in Iragwiji when you could not show your face. Has his exit not shown you there are men who place value on principle than money? I have lived my political life on the basis of the fact that an adversary today can be an ally tomorrow and vice versa. I am not beholden to any person outside the core beliefs we share. One of the men I had an open disagreement with was President Obasanjo, and when we reconciled, it was an open thing. That differentiates me from you, that differentiates me from you who walks both sides of the streets simultaneously. You were with Nadeku and also in bed with Abacha through whom you forged friendship with the Chagoris, who are your business partners till date. The political buffoons around you would hold you out as an anti-third time person today, but you know what happened between us on May 2nd, 2006. We had a meeting at Airport Hotel in Lagos where you were dictating the communique against third term Unknown to participants, you were at a meeting till wee hours of that morning, 
to work a third time in another way. Now, this particular, I'm still going to read more. This particular letter is an expose, right? And it's exposing lots of things about Bolatinibu. Listen, I was reading the communique to the press when you called me. I gave the phone to the late Reverend Tunji Adebi, but you told him you wanted to speak with me. We didn't get to talk till late in the night. I had with me in the car as you spoke with me from the VGC, from VGC to Ikeja, then President of Egbe Omo Yoruba in North America, Mr. Odusanya, let me quote you verbatim. That is what Tenubu said to Mr. Odusanya. I hope you have not released that communique. We need to manage this third time carefully. Obasanjo is a blind cat. If he causes problem now, and they kill one Yoruba graduate in Kanu, and we kill 200 people selling onions in mile 12, it is not equal. I am therefore proposing that we have a win-win situation instead of outright third term. We can have the CONFAB recommendation of one six-year tenure, starting with the incumbent, having two extra years, and so with we, the governors. We can use the two years to empower people like you and hand over to one of you. I have asked General Alani at Kinrinade to come to come and I am going to meet Professor Shoinka to discuss it. I want you to think about it. This letter is in the public space. When you go to Google, type late Yinka Oduma King's letter to Tinubu, you will see this particular file there so that you won't think we're giving you illegitimate news. Now listen. He continued, I told you as a matter of fact that the proposition was unreasonable and there was nothing for me to think about as I would prefer outright third term where we would have elections to automatic two years extension. But my eyes, listen to me, but my eyes were open to how unreliable you were that night. Here was a man dictating communique against third term in the morning having this conversation with me at night. That means Tinubu is a double-edged sword. I made up my mind on you that night. The conversation I had with you minutes after Funshaw Williams was killed and the way you handled your succession made me to severe political links with you within six months. This was the later of late Yinka Odumakin to Bola Ahmed Tinubu. Now, I don't want to say much about this letter because this letter has lots of secrets in it. The letter has told us that Tinubu's real parents died long ago and the parents he is claiming to be his parents are not actually his parents. That means Tinubu, according to this letter, lived a fake life of greed and lies because he wanted to be um, identified as one of the people from the influential and royal families. This letter has also opened the background to the fact that Tinubu never attended any secondary school in Nigeria or outside Nigeria. This particular letter has also brought out secrets that had to say that during Tinubu's second term in office as Lagos State Governor, he was trying to work against a third term for every other governor, but by the other side, on a low key, he was working for a third time for himself. That means he was a double-edged sword amidst all other secrets that were laid bare in this letter. I hope you understood this particular expose. I have challenged you. Go and Google it. Google it. When you Google it, you will know what I'm saying. You will understand that this particular letter is real and legitimate. Now, um, I have a final video. Now, I would like you to... Pay attention to this particular video. Nigerians have let out their grievances from the streets. This time, they want the government of Bola Ahmed Tinubu to end right now, as soon as possible. In fact, they want Bola Ahmed Tinubu sacked and taken away. Enough is enough, according to these Nigerians that are making their grievances known in this video. If you hear what these Nigerians are saying, you would know that wherever they are, they are feeling the pinch and the pain of everything and every bad policy and every mistake that Tinubu is making. Watch this video. 
more details after the break. Because in our country, look at how we are suffering. If we see opportunity to, to, to move in the government, we move in this uh, leadership. So if I'm, to that extent. Of course, of course. It's not that our youth are so lazy. Because why I say that we are so lazy is that we don't want to die. But we are not lazy. But I am talking about in terms of uh, coming out to challenge our life. We have to take the uh, uh, leaders accountable. We have every right. If the president that is uh, in charge now is not giving us what we want, we have every right to hold him accountable. We are we have right to remove him there. We can we can uh, go for by uh, uh, revolution. So yes, the... I vote for Obi, but Tilibu uh, the vote to himself. Tilibu is not the win. He will die. That's it, though. So should if military comes, then they don't want to take over. Yes, I prefer military to come to, to come and take over Nigeria. So we are, we are, we have peace. Knowing the implication that can come from military rule, you still prefer them to come and take over. Yes, very well. Let the military to, to come and take. Take over in Nigeria, so we have peace. So, so it stands now military rule or civilian rule? Military. So military should come and take over? Yes. They should come out, yes, they should come out in and uh, let me take over. I voted him, yes. But he's not doing well. He's not doing well. Look at, I'm driving a car every day. And this, the cost of this is very high. So in the next election, if they give you 100,000 there to vote for Tinibu again, will you collect? I will not collect though. If it's Tinibu again, I will not collect. Tinibu should come and do something so that we can eat well. And then we will look at, oh, you don't see my clothes, you don't see me. Yeah, I can. Uh -huh. We are smiling. <laughs> smiling. We are managed. Yeah. We are managed. No, yeah. any match one way, I like it. You see, no, the, thing is, the, the price is like before, the thing don't cost. No, everything costs for Nigeria. Assuming now, as they don't come out first, the city. Yeah. So the thing one day they buy at 50 naira, now not 200, some now 500. We don't know how this kind of leader go carry, carry us go. We, we don't know where Tinubu they carry us go. We don't get surprised. You go? A day like, a day for head fire for now. Why is that so? Because our leaders, they know they lead us well. Now, so we will suffer for Buare, now not Tinubu. As we suffer for Tinubu uh, like this, uh, even to buy for it now, no way. Some days we will come out to get to get 2,000 a while because of first small thing we will get with the user and the buy for it. So they suffer. Make our leaders and try help us. May they hear our cry, I beg. We they beg them. May God for you. Well, things is not going more better. How is supposed to go? Why did you say so? Uh, the, in fact, the economy and everything is too, is too tight. Our well, president said he has us in mind. He said he knows what we are feeling. And he's going to do some things that will make life a bit better for us. Well, I pray if he says so and let his word become to pass. So if he comes now, you get that 8,000, how would you feel? In fact, well, the 8,000 naira is not the issue and it's not the problem. Attempt. Well, it's a welcome development here. Yeah. No, 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 no. I don't. No, no, no. It's no matter what happens, civilian government. Yes, yes. I uh, civilian government is. We are managed. Yeah. We are managed. No, yeah. any match one way. Like. All right. Um, I'm really sad about the way Nigerians are complaining. All right. Enough is enough because um, we can't continue having this kind of situation. We thought um, Buhari's time was worse, but right now we are beginning to see that we are experiencing something else hence the reason why we all are saying the judiciary should do the needful and um, uphold justice instead of subverting justice so that governance will be changed by the grace of god because we all know the will of the people we all know who the people voted for so let's keep our fingers crossed to see what the judiciary have to do we still have some days left now finally i have a video that may likely be the reason why Atiku Abubakar is bitter about Bola Tenubu. This video has Bola Tenubu saying lots of bad things about Atiku Abubakar, castigating Atiku Abubakar and questioning his source of wealth. That is a case of pot calling kettle black. So I think this video is actually the reason why, or from my analysis, this video may be one of the reasons why Atiku got infuriated and had to take the fight on his shoulders and that made him hell bent on exposing, you know, hell bent on exposing Bola Ahmed Tinubu as a form of revenge. So I think that this um, particular issue of um, bringing certificates and results from Chicago State University does not only start with the tribunal, but it started with this particular video. Mind you, this video was done before the campaign or during the campaign period. Watch this video. More details after the break.
Even before you say this, even my greatest rival today met me with Yara Drive. I think we are back. <laughs> met me with Yara Drive. I was one of the youngest, brilliant strategists of Lake Shea Yara Drive. He was just out of custom that time. <laughs> Ask him to go and read the civil service regulation. They asked him questions. How did you make money? He said from selling cars. Can you as a civil servant involve in other trade and businesses? No. <laughs> you have attracted disqualification. You don't desire to compete with others. Drawn inspiration, I've said that. My political history is full of examples of long abiding support for the no. No rebadu was on our platform. I've supported that in 207. Check a part of the no. <laughs> Then, don't blame me if I ask for the payback period. It's payback. Let him endorse me now. Instead of conducting rally around Kaduna why I'm talking to great people here. Yeah. <laughs> Right, you've um, watched the video there, and um, you you heard what he said about Atiku Abubakar. So anybody that is saying um, the enmity or the political enmity between these two people started during the tribunal, I don't seem to agree with you. This and other statements made by different people, Festus Kiyamo, Femi Fani Kayode, and so on and so forth, we are all responsible for um, the exasperation that was experienced by Atiku Abubakar that made him um, really get so infuriated, not just the tribunal, but he decided to pursue the Chicago State University result issue till the end. So let us see where all this will lead us. I would urge our viewers, please like our videos, share them, please. When I say share these videos, I don't mean share them without following up. If you love this channel, share these videos to every WhatsApp group you belong to, every social media platform, so that everybody in Nigeria and in diaspora would be able to lay hands on this information because lots of people are yet to have a grip on who this man, Bola Tinubu, is. So um, finally, drop a comment for us in the comment section, please, because these things are very, very important to us. Then if you're watching me for the first time, subscribe to this channel. And then um, if you've not tapped the notification bell, do so now so that anytime I drop a new content, you'll be able to have a grip on it as a first um, comma, or let me say as, as a very, very early bed. So thank you so much from our table here. We're going to be drawing the curtain. See you next time. Bye.